name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace, Peace in, in heaven, heaven and glory in the highest. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Matthew 21, verses 1 to 11. Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, and on a colt, the fall of donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloths on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloths on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give him thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. <laughs> On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King and follow him in a way that leads to eternal life who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us go forth in peace. In the name, in the name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us all sing Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, I lift up your name. We praise you. Psalm 118, 
Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief corner, cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us life. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. I press record. Yeah. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Then one of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, what will you give me if I betray him to you? They paid him 30 pieces of silver. And from that moment, he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed, and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, the one has, who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not, have to, be, not to have been born. Jesus, Judas who betrayed him said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. 
And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go to, over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible that this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, you, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is, is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my, be my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived with him as a large crowd, was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign saying, the one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slaves of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour Jesus said to the crowds, have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place, so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas the high priest in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest, and going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward and last at last two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, you have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him. 
And some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him. And she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse and swore an oath. I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crowds, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and his elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They, uh, they bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate the governor. When Jesus, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah, and they took the thirty pieces of silver, the prize of the one on whom a prize had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a prize, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At the time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas? Or Jesus who is called the Messiah. For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and our children. So he released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. 
Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered a whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns in the crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. Let us all rise. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink, mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put a charge against him, which read, this is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elder, elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him, in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Lemes Sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forgotten me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge fill it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two, from top to bottom. The earth shook, and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to men. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly this man was God's son. Many women were also there, looking on from a distance, they had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Jesus took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of the preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that impostor said while he was still alive. After three days, I will rise again. Therefore command that the tomb be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead. 
and the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, to them, you have a guard of soldiers, go make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us all sing together my boat of life. to read with you the reflection of the Reverend Nan Sladen, deacon at Holy Child St. Martin in Daly City. Are we there yet? Many parents know this question that gets asked frequently during a long trip with their children. Or maybe we remember our childhood selves asking that question, hopefully, repeatedly, only to have our parents answer with some version of, Not yet. Are we there yet? While traveling, we might have tried all sorts of diversions, like playing little games or having a conversation with our family members, but on a long journey, the question comes up again and again, despite our best efforts to distract. Are we there yet? In a way, after weeks of being isolated in our homes, being unable to attend worship services at church, and of wondering how we are going to make ends meet if we can't go to work, we may be asking, asking a similar version of that question now. Are we there yet? Are we to the time that we can be with our friends without maintaining a six-foot distance? Are we there yet? May we gather again to worship and share the Eucharist? Are we there so that to that hopefully not to future time when we don't have to worry about going out without wearing a mask anymore. Sadly, like many parents have had to say to their child on a trip, no, we aren't there just yet. We still need to be mindful and protective of ourselves and others 
no matter how trying the circumstances may be for us right now. But we are traveling in time towards the resolution of this situation. And we know that God is with us during this difficult time and will continue to be with us when things begin to look brighter. We can rest assured that God knows our struggles now and will rejoice with us when time of trial is over. In Matthew's Gospel today, we read about Jesus also being on a journey into Jerusalem on a donkey. In a short window of time that Matthew describes here, the crowds were celebratory. The people laid down palms, even their garments, in the path of Jesus, praying Him jubilantly. <clears throat> if we close our eyes and meditate on that scene, we can almost feel the excitement that was in the air. Blessed is He who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. I like to imagine for a while that I am there cheering and calling out my praises too. Perhaps seeing the palm fronds being laid down before him, maybe even throwing my favorite coat down before him, how wonderful of an experience that must have been. But over the coming week, Jesus is also on a journey towards the cross. The adoring crowds would soon be gone. And dark times would be at hand. For us, during Holy Week, which we now begin, we will walk with Jesus in His journey as we remember His last words, His reassurances to His disciples. The servant role He assumed when He washed the feet of others, the cruel punishment He received, and more. Many times during Holy Weeks, as I have reflected particularly on the perverse events that began for Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane following the Last Supper, I find myself asking that same question that I ask as a child. Are we there yet? Are we at Easter yet with the triumphant glory of the risen Christ? But for those few last days of Holy Week leading up to Easter, the answer is the same. No, we aren't there yet. This year, with our shelter-in-place restrictions, we may have the blessing of more time to reflect on meanings of the happening during Jesus' last week. Hopefully, this week, Instead of frantically preparing for Easter pageants, egg hunts, Easter dinner, and other traditions, we will instead take the time to walk with Jesus as He makes His way to the cross. Let us read the Passion story again and again and reflect on its meaning. Let us imagine ourselves as being there with Jesus. Maybe as a witness at the foot of the cross, or an observer at any of the week's events. Maybe we made the bread that was part of Jesus' last meal, or maybe we imagine ourselves as a Roman soldier who doesn't like what he's forced to do. What might Jesus be telling us? What words is he saying to us? In our reflections, let us resist the urge to ask if we are there yet. But with the assurance that Easter surely will occur. Let us find meaning in our current situation also. Knowing that the God who raised Jesus from the dead will also raise us from our trials. As we read of Jesus' journey, we can be reminded that God had a plan and a process then, as God has had all throughout history, up to and including our lives today. 
Suffering then and now was at least temporary. Suffering is painful, to be sure, but it won't last forever. We are promised that. So for today, let us celebrate Jesus like the crowds who were so excited as Jesus rode into Jerusalem. Then, as the week progresses, let us walk with Jesus through his trials and tribulations. For we know we aren't there yet, but can be sure that Easter will come. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. Let us all rise for the prayer of the people. <clears throat> we pray for the governments of the nations of the world that we may have wisdom and foresight in dealing with the worldwide health crisis we are now facing. We pray for all the medical personnel and first responders that they may be guided by your mercy and grace as they work to ensure our safety and well-being. We pray for all government workers, sanitation workers, grocery store personnel, and all those who, have, who faithfully provide essential services during this time. We pray for all who are ill with COVID-19 and ask for restoration of health. We pray for those who have died and their families. May our Lord Jesus walk with them and comfort them. We pray for all those who are unemployed because of the pandemic and for those who face economic uncertainty. We pray for the most vulnerable among us, the homeless, the poor, the elderly, the mentally ill. Give us hearts of compassion to care for them in their need. And Lord, we pray for all who suffer fear, anxiety, loneliness, or depression during these difficult times. Help them to know that you are God and will never leave or forsake them. We pray for our HCSM family, for safety, comfort, hope, and strength. Keep us bound to each other with ties of love and solidarity. We give thanks to you, God, for your love that will never leave us and for our precious connections with others. We thank you for hope and that it is still your beautiful world. Most of all, we thank you this Lent and Easter season for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, who has conquered sin, evil, and death forever, and who comes to bring abundant life and hope out of sadness and despair. Please offer your own intercessions and thanksgiving at this time. Let us now pray as our Savior Christ has taught us. Our, our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Let us with one another share God's peace by nodding. Peace, peace be with you. Peace to all of you, wherever you may be. Let us all say together the prayer of Saint Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. You have promised through your well beloved Son. When two or three are gathered in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us sing together.
the king's highway. It's the um, general hymns.